Hello and welcome to Strange Stories. It's great to have you here. We are all about sharing stories of near-death experiences from around the world in the hopes of bringing some light and inspiration to your day. Our daily videos offer a glimpse into what lies beyond this life, and we believe that they can help us all appreciate the gift of life a little bit more. If you enjoy our content, please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. Your support means the world to us and helps us continue to grow. And to our returning viewers, welcome back. We're thrilled to have you with us again. So go ahead, grab a cozy blanket, get comfy, and join us for today's incredible near-death experience story. My name is Sierra Warden, and I fit many different descriptions. I work as a social worker, a mental health therapist, a mother, and I've also had a close call with death. I've had a similar experience to many others who've come dangerously close to death, and I believe it's incredibly important to talk about and discuss because the parallels are so fascinating and I think they're really compelling. Hence, my close call with death occurred quite some time ago. Just like many of the textbooks I read in school, I was 19 years old and going through a difficult time that involved moving away to college and becoming estranged from many of my primary support systems. I also began exhibiting a lot of mental health problems, many of which were alarming and eventually became quite consuming for my overall brain and mental health. So I started to experience a lot of depressed periods, and I turned to drugs as a kind of coping mechanism. Before I realized it though, I was also experiencing a lot of existential and self-harming thoughts. So before I knew it, I had reached a point in my life where I wasn't really taking care of myself, not accessing the kind of support and resources that I should have been doing but the chemicals in my brain and all that were telling me to do otherwise. I was also really not doing well with my brain health and overall emotional wellness, and I had reached a level of despair that I'd never really experienced before. I regret to say that I came to the conclusion that I would be better off not being there. Because of this, I felt very alone in my experience and how it turned out. I didn't really open up to many people about what had happened until much later in life when I started hearing other people's stories. Some of our details and some of our lived experiences match up, which I think is pretty powerful. The last conscious memory I have is of actually feeling my body shut down. My heart felt like it was pounding out of my chest as I recall feeling it. My heart rate was incredibly high. The last thing I remember is that my breathing had greatly accelerated and I recall feeling a little queasy. I don't recall anything after that, even how I was found while I was still conscious. I don't recall being taken to the hospital though. I have no memory of the ER. I don't recall the ICU at all. I don't have any memories of such procedure. I do recall waking up in the intensive care unit and then simply being carried to the mental health unit after being placed in a wheelchair. However, I remember losing consciousness and then the next thing I remember is just being in this enormous, enormous prairie-like field with these huge, gorgeous mountains in the background and it was a beautiful, clear sky and it was warm and calm. This experience was powerful for me and it seems difficult to talk about. And I recall that there were hundreds of lovely flowers all over the field and I could see for miles in every direction. I remember that right away I got a sense of serenity, tranquility and clarity. Everything in the field seemed to have a sense of vividness and clarity that I'd never felt before. And it wasn't the kind of vivid perception you might expect. It wasn't overpowering or gave you a heightened sense of perception like when you use drugs or something like that. This was unique. It wasn't too much. There was a strong sensation of being at home there. There was a feeling of security. It was quite fascinating. Then I recalled that there was a huge tree in the midst of the field. There was only one tree and it was clearly formed like a tree. Even though I was aware that it was a tree, I couldn't help but be drawn to it since it seemed to be generating a golden glow. This experience was really vivid, lovely, relaxing, and quiet. I simply recall feeling a sense of safety and belonging rather than really thinking about it. I can't stress this enough. When I was sort of processing everything, my departed grandmother and a deceased high school classmate appeared nearby in this field. They didn't really walk in my direction or anything. They just appeared out of nowhere. I felt like I could sense them before they appeared. My grandma, meantime, has always been spunky, Funny, but straightforward. I can still picture her kind of chuckling and asking, What are you doing here? As she turned to face me. You have no business being here. She was merely somewhat amazed. Like what? And a little bit disappointed as well as perplexed. You're not meant to be here yet, she said. 
Following that, my departed classmate remained silent. He had just arrived, but it's how I remember him before he passed away, just like his soul, his eyes, and his vitality. But despite the fact that he remained silent, he managed to communicate with me in such a way that I was able to understand what he was saying, feeling, and thinking. Just kind of like, it's not quite time, you should return. Then all of a sudden, I can recall experiencing a tremendous surge of sorrow and sadness. I didn't feel particularly furious. Rather, I was more disappointed and sorry that I had to leave. And that was essentially the last thing I can recall. I don't remember staying there for very long, but everything seemed wonderfully sharp and crisp. The next event was my awakening in the ICU unit, as I already mentioned. Yet I can't say that I recall waking up. I clearly remember just sort of existing. My first memories being transferred to a different unit, so I must have been awake for some time. The fact that I was still here, that I was alive in this unit, and that I was essentially told or asked to return made me feel angry, very unhappy, and disappointed when I was more cognizant and with it. And because it was so shocking, it took me a while to digest it. I apologize. I had no idea that I would become emotional. There simply wasn't nobody with whom to truly discuss what had occurred. Furthermore, I was at a loss for words to convey it. That was challenging. So as I said, it was a very natural, internalized experience for me that felt quite strong and genuine. Hence, having to essentially return to the physical world was like going through a grieving and loss process. That, in my opinion, made it somewhat challenging, and I had no idea how deadly it had been. I simply believed that I had accomplished something. It wasn't until much later that I visited with a psychiatrist who told me, I don't really know what you believe in, nor do I really care if you believe in something bigger than yourself. He'd been in practice for more than 25 years, yet in the more than 25 years I've been practicing, he claimed, I've never seen someone alive standing across from me with that kind of toxicity. The fact that you've made it through this and are now sitting across from me, he continued, should mean something to you. That, therefore, had some significance for me. Around 10 years later, I discovered that the emergency room doctors must have advised the people who brought me in that if they'd been even a few minutes late or later, I would have undoubtedly gone into cardiac arrest. I'm still trying to figure out what precisely happened, but I know that something brought me into that situation. So yes, that was quite fascinating. It was fairly profound, and I believe that working as a professional social worker and a mental health therapist has naturally had a significant impact on me. It influenced how I thought about spirituality. It influenced the way I think about believing in something greater than myself, believing in a higher power, and believing in life after death. As a result, it has only increased my desire for helping people who are going through emotional or mental health crises. And I believe it also helped me become a more thoughtful mother. I make a conscious effort to be much more involved with and conscious of my children's emotional well-being, as well as how I can support them and aid in their development into happier, healthier adults. Therefore, I believe that getting a glimpse of something greater than oneself, this world, and things that are happening outside of our physical bodies really helps to put things into perspective by demonstrating that we are merely a tiny, tiny little speck of dust in this enormous universe, which actually consists of multiple universes. Hence, it gave me perspective. It aided me in developing compassion and making me aware of how crucial it is to build relationships with individuals and provide a safe space for difficult conversations. That significantly altered my personality. It fueled my motivation and love for my work. Something became stronger and more succinct as a result. It also kind of leaves us a craving and a need to return, which is probably why I started to become emotional earlier. That can be challenging for those of us with mental health issues, and I believe that some of us are much too sensitive for this world and are aware that there are other places that are calmer, cozier, and more beautiful. Nevertheless, this should not prevent us from experiencing and learning new things here.